What's up everybody? We're back. So I've been reading some comments. Um, I've seen a lot of comments recently um, since the last couple of videos, especially the, the one about tr the, uh, reading track surfaces. Um, <clears throat> I've seen a lot of questions and I've had a lot of questions sent to me in my messenger uh, about this thing back here. But most importantly, people are interested in the suspension on the truck. So I figure tonight might be a good night since it's sitting in the shop and it's already on the lift to uh, run a little truck up on the lift and um, give everybody a little peek at what's underneath this thing. So let's get started. All right, we got the little guy up on the lift. Check out these brand new Bogarts, man. God, I just, I love these things. Copo ones. <clears throat> now, before we get started, I wanna explain something to everybody, which most of you would probably already understand. We do have certain companies that, that sponsor us. However, we are not sponsored by anyone that we didn't already use their product beforehand. What I'm saying is, is there's nothing on this truck that was um, given to us or sponsored that we had not already purchased one of before or had run their product before. In other words, I'm not just going to tell you guys um, this is what's on the truck because we're sponsored by that company. Everything I'm going to show you tonight was already on this truck before we ever picked them up as a sponsor. And that's important because a lot of times, a lot of times, people will tell you something just because they're getting paid to tell you they're using a product. Sometimes they're not even using the product at all, but that's not the case with us. All right, let's get started up front. And in my opinion, this is probably the most important part of the entire truck is the front. It has stock original to the truck upper and lower control arms. It has the original spindles. You'll notice it does have a one inch taller ball joint. The upper ball joints are an aftermarket deal. And the reason for that is that it allows the lower control arm to drop another inch lower, okay, before the upper control arm hits the stop on the frame. Now, you'll notice that the truck has what's called a bump steer kit installed, okay? The bump steer kit is this, basically this tie rod in here. It's a bare tie rod sleeve and an end and this assembly that bolts it to the spindle, okay? And what that does, all right, what that does is it's intended to keep the tie rod on the exact same plane as the control arm. You see how the tie rod right here, this is the tie rod, and the lower control arm are on the same angle, the same plane, all the way to the very bottom of the suspension travel. In other words, the suspension has dropped as low as it's gonna go, and as you can see, the tie rods are on the exact same plane, same angle as the lower control arm. See how it lines up right through the lower control arm bushing bolt? Everything's nice and aligned. 
Okay, that's very important. And I'm gonna to explain to you why here right now. So, <clears throat> some good friends of ours uh, in Columbus, Lucor Automotive, has aligned this truck twice for us. Um, but just recently, when we put the stock upper control arms back on, they installed this bump steer kit along with the one inch taller uh, ball joints, the, the upper ball joints. Now, the reason for that is if you've ever seen an S10 or a G body or a, even a Nova, Camaro, any of the GM cars, if they have, have if they have had modifications to allow more front suspension travel in the downward position. You'll notice that a lot of the cars, the front wheels will tip in at the top or they'll tow in, okay, as the cars take off. Or when the front wheels come down, you'll notice that the front wheels shimmy real bad. Okay, that has a lot to do with bump steer. And this bump steer kit that they installed as well as the alignment that they provided us does away with those problems. And it's very important because this little guy, believe it or not, is very much capable of over 130 miles an hour in the eighth on a bare road. That's a fact. And a lot of times the front end is fully extended. I'm talking about bare road. I'm talking about virgin blacktop. Okay, upper high 130s. Okay, <laughs> now that may not be the fastest in the world, but I'm telling you, it's plenty fast. And if the front suspension geometry isn't right, you know, this truck's got seven and a half inches of front end travel. Do the math. Nose is up seven and a half inches, front tires are still on the ground. The alignment has to be perfect. And we go to Lucor Automotive in Columbus and they have done an incredible job. We have never had a problem with the front suspension on this truck. Every time they've touched this thing, it's been phenomenal. Okay, so this is some important things. Uh, if you guys are considering doing some work on a G body or an S10 or a Camaro or whatever, if you're gonna, if you're gonna street race and no prep, you're gonna need all that front end travel, as much as you can get. All right, let's move on. So as you can see, maybe you can see, those are the stock original coil springs. And this truck was originally a 4.3 V6 with air conditioning. So those are the original 4.3 with air front springs. I don't know if you can see it. See how the bottom coil is smashed because we're hillbillies and five or six years ago we took a torch to the coils and uh, lowered the truck that way. Now, I am not telling you that this is how you should do it. In fact, I'm telling you not to do it this way. That's not the right way of doing it. It just so happens that when we first got this truck and we lowered it, it was going to be a 12 second bracket car. And we really didn't care how we lowered it. As long as it sat a little bit lower, that's all we cared. When we originally heated, the, <laughs> when we originally took the torch to those front springs, we had never intended to build a four second truck. Okay? So keep that in mind. Don't do how we do it. If I warn you that what we did is wrong, take that to heart. So with that being said, it does retain its original coil springs. It does have air, uh, aerospace disc brakes installed. And as you can see, it has extra long brake hoses. Now, this is very important, guys. If you intend to modify your front suspension the way we have for additional front end travel, please, please listen to this warning. You must absolutely must check and make sure your brake hoses are long enough okay because if you go given your s10 or your g body or camaro whatever 
an extra three and a half inches of suspension travel. And if you know, you may have stock brakes on and if the stock brake hoses aren't long enough, it's, it's, uh, it's possible that the first time you take the car or the truck out and turn it loose and it pulls the front wheels, it'll, it's possible it'll snap the brake hoses off if they're too short. Okay. You don't want that. You don't want to experience no brakes on the first pass after doing a major upgrade. Okay. So keep that in mind. Moving on. Now, these are stock front spindles. There's a reason I refuse to use a lowering spindle. And I'm going to explain this to you right now. And I've had this conversation online with many a person and people want to argue with me and they don't understand what I'm trying to say online. So I'm going to explain it to you here in this video. Okay. I've got the truck down and it's almost touching the floor. There, it's touching the floor. Now, let me give you some idea as to how high that front end is, okay? With the front suspension fully extended, okay? That is a 28 inch tall tire, okay? And that's very important. And those are stock spindles. That is also very important. If you buy and install a lowering spindle, okay, to lower the front of your truck, you're effectively just moving the center line of the spindle up two to three inches, whatever the, whatever the lowering spindle is designed to, to do. Now, <clears throat> when you raise the center line of the spindle up two inches, yes, it does lower the truck, okay? But it also affects your starting point for where your suspension travel begins from your static ride height. Now, I've got the truck back up. The front suspension's fully extended again. Now, if you had a two inch spindle, lowering spindle on this truck, with the suspension at its lowest point, your front, the top of the tire would be two inches higher. That's two inches of separation that you've lost from static ride height. Now that's important for you guys to understand because where you start and your suspension arc dictates how much downward travel you have from static ride height. Okay? So what I'm telling you is tall tire, stock spindle, okay? Light spring, okay? Compresses the suspension considerably more than if it had a lowering spindle and a 26 inch tall tire. The taller the tire and a stock spindle allows you to compress the front suspension farther, driving the control arms and everything higher up into the wheel well at static ride height. At static ride height. Which means when you go to launch, you now have an additional two to three inches of downward travel from your static ride height. It's very important that you guys understand that. Hopefully you guys can understand what I mean by static ride height, basically where the truck sits, the, the ride height that it sits at just sitting still with its full load on the front suspension. Now, My son is a complete hack and he just doesn't care, but I care, but it's his truck and he did this. It's, it's all right. It's whatever, but it just looks like hell. And I don't suggest doing this. 
but this is what we did. I shouldn't say we did this, my son did this. This spot on the frame, you see where that square, you can see where the paint has been rubbed off in a square, the oil, whatever you want to call it. All right, that's where the original bump stops would hit the frame that were originally pressed in the upper control arm. We, of course, have removed the bump stops and my son did this custom fabrication job on the control arm to notch the control arm, to allow the control arm a little bit more clearance so that it doesn't hit the frame there as early as what it normally would have as it drops down. It's embarrassing to show this, but it's my son. What am I gonna do? So that's the front suspension. Uh, they're Viking dual adjustable shocks. They're not custom valve. They're just standard Viking. I think they're Crusaders dual adjustable shocks. We are sponsored by Viking. However, we've had Viking shocks on this truck since two or three years ago. And we've had very good luck with them. Um, I don't have anything but good things to say about them. We have beat them to death. And not only that, but this truck has been towed from Ohio to Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, all the way down into the Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas area, Baytown. This truck has been all over the country on an open trailer, bouncing and hopping around. And um, we did wear out uh, one pair of front shocks, but let's be honest, gee, many Christmas. They've been beat to death before we had a problem with them. So yes, we are sponsored by Viking, but I absolutely wholeheartedly believe in those shocks. They're, they're good shocks for the money. You can't beat them for the money. I promise you that. They work good. Okay, so just real quick, just an overview of the front suspension before we move to the back. Stock upper and lower control arms. Slightly modified upper control arms. One inch taller upper ball joints, okay? Stock front spindles, stock springs, stock. You guys do not need high dollar fancy parts to make an S10 work like ours. All right. Let's go to the back. Now, first things first. These are standard Caltrack bars. Okay? They are not special ordered. There's nothing special about them. They're just the same Caltrack bars that you could go buy at Jegs or Summit or wherever. These are the original to this truck 1988 leaf springs. The only modification to the spring is that the overload leaf, which was at the bottom of the spring pack, has been removed. 
Now, the reason we removed that overload spring is because it drastically changes the spring rate instantly once the truck compresses the spring so far. I, I can't tell you the measurement or the, the, the number of inches, but as the truck would squat, okay, at some point the overload leaf would make contact and it would completely change the spring rate and it makes the spring much more bouncy. And that makes it very difficult for the shock to control the spring. So we removed the overload leaf on both sides. Now, you're gonna notice, of course, it does have wedges. I think those are four degree wedges, if I'm not mistaken. And that's just a standard two inch aluminum drop block. No, it's not solid. <laughs> they should be, but they're not. That's another sore subject where I've been after my son to do something about that for a long time. And until it puts him in the fence, he's probably not gonna touch it. Now, <clears throat> there's a reason why we use a drop block. We use a drop block with a stock spring, one, because we're cheap. But there's a reason why we haven't gotten away from it, even though Junior could probably afford to do whatever he wanted right now with the truck. There's a reason why we still run these, okay? Let me show you something. The arch of the leaf spring dictates how low the rear bar pickup point is on the shock mount or the leaf spring perch at the bottom, okay? You see how the bar runs uphill? Now this of course is with the suspension fully dropped to the, to the uh, end of the shock travel. But even when this truck is sitting on the ground full weight on the suspension, this bar goes uphill. Not quite as bad as it does right now, but it still goes uphill. You'll notice that S10s or, and Blazers that are using a drop leaf in the back, you'll notice that this bar will sometimes be level or even running downhill. Now, you may get by with that on prep track, but on the street and on a no prep surface and the kind of tracks that we run on, you're not gonna get by with that, okay? I'm not gonna get into this tonight. There's a lot, there's just too much to go into this in this video. Study four link suspension, ladder bars, and pickup points. Just do a search on that. Tim McCamus is a good, uh, is a much, 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 much smarter person than I am and can explain all that much better than I can. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm really not that smart. And I definitely struggle explaining things sometimes, even though you guys may think that's not the case. What you guys don't see is a lot of these video clips I have to redo six times because I'm really not well educated and I'm definitely not a very good speaker sometimes, so back to it. So Tim McCamus is on YouTube. He has a channel. I would strongly advise you to watch. And I'm cert I've never spoken with anyone at Caltrax, but I am quite certain that if you were to call them, they could explain to you much better than I can. But what I can tell you is, if you've got a drop leaf spring set in the back and you're trying to no prep and street race, you might as well hang it up because your pickup points are not gonna be right. I promise you that. Okay, now, a lot of you have asked what rear end we run. Obviously, it's a nine inch Ford. Technically, it's a Mosier nine inch. We bought this directly from Mosier. It is a bolt in 
rear axle directly from Mosier. Okay, it's stock width. It's meant to bolt right in a stock S10. It has a cast iron center section and uh, it has a 370 gear ratio and I think they're 35 spline axles. As you can see, it has Viking dual adjustable Crusader rear shocks in the stock locations and it has a TRZ anti-roll bar that was installed at Woodman Automotive down near Dayton. They did a fantastic job on it for us. I will tell you, I get a lot of questions about how do you set up your cow tracks? How do you gap them? How much air gap? How do you set your anti-roll bar? My answer, neutral, neutral, neutral. There is no preload on the Caltrack bars on either side, and there's no preload on the anti-roll bar. We put Billy in the truck, fill it full of fuel, and we climb underneath of it with the tools we need, and we set both the Caltrack bars neutral, just maybe a flat, a flat, if that, of preload, no gap. Okay, and uh, as far as the anti-roll bar, we set it neutral. When Billy's sitting in the truck, we adjust the uh, right, uh, we, well, basically you just set the left side. We, what we do is we set the left side at a certain length, and then we just adjust the other side so that it's setting neutral. So the bolt just goes right in and right out with the truck setting neutral, full of fuel, with the driver in it, okay? There's no sneaky sneak, there's no tricks. It's literally as simple as not getting lost. It's as simple as making one change at a time. However, I know that sounds simple and it's not. The fact of the matter is, it's so easy to get lost, tuning suspension. It's so easy to get lost. Billy might get upset if I give out the shock settings, so I'm not gonna give those out. But I can tell you we run the rear soft and the front relatively tight on rebound. And um, depending on how much power we're trying to put down, uh, we'll run anywhere from five clicks of uh, rebound to 15 in the front, depending on how um, how good the surface is, how much power he's got in it on the launch, how high the RPM is, and how much boost he's leaving on. It's important, guys. It's important that you make one change at a time. If you read the directions that come with your parts, they give you a starting point read your instructions read them twice read them while you're taking a shit when there's no distractions read it if you don't understand it call the manufacturer of the parts that you have purchased and ask them your questions do not install a bunch of suspension parts and adjust them the way Jimbo Ray Bob on the internet says he runs his. Do not do that. So uh, before I finish this video up, I will say that, um, you know, the truck does not have a mid plate. It does not have a motor plate in it. It's a stock S10 frame. It uses this, the original 4.3 frame mounts. It uses transdapt V8 conversion solid motor mounts. It does have an X brace in the frame and it does have a cage in it, okay, to stiffen it up. But key ingredients to an S10, absolute key ingredients. If you're starting with nothing, if you're starting with nothing, and what I mean by nothing is a completely stock S10 pickup, 
bare minimum, bare minimum, you need this X brace. Let me show you. Now, the transmission's out of it right now. It's up at Vickers. But this is the X brace. Tommy's truck has one also. Tommy's is actually bigger than this one. But this gives you some idea as to the dimensions of the X brace. We can just barely get the transmission in and out of it. Tommy's is a Tommy's X brace is a lot bigger and it's much more difficult to get the transmission out of it. If you're trying to put more than I would say 650 wheel horsepower to an S10 chassis. Um, well, let's just say this. Let's start at 650 wheel horsepower, okay? At 650 wheel horsepower, approximately six, 700 foot pounds of torque, uh, no matter how you're getting it, whether it's turbo or nitrous, Nitrous is going to be a little bit harder on the chassis than the turbo. But no matter how you're getting it, the bare minimum is an X brace in the frame and an anti roll bar in the back. You will go faster, okay? The truck will be more controllable and it will be more easily tunable if you have the frame stiffened up with an X brace and an anti-roll bar in the back, okay? That's fact, guarantee you, happen every time. Once you start to get up around 900 wheel, better have a cage in it, better have a cage in it. And really, in all honesty, you really should consider putting a mid, a mid plate and a motor plate in it. Neither one of these two trucks have it, but they're gonna get it because they're extremely hard on motor mount bolts and motor mounts. Uh, but trying to just go over some common questions that I keep seeing and I want to answer those as I, uh, as I get to these details, but let me think, what else do I want to cover? Now there's some more sneaky sneak going on here. Of course, these are the brand new Bogart Copo ones that we just bought with single bead locks. Okay, they're a 15 by 10 inch wheel with a four and a half inch offset. Now, without mini tubbing and moving the rear frame rail in, notching the rear frame rail, that's about as big of a tire and as wide of a rim as you're gonna fit under a stock S10 without having the wheels stick way out past the bedside and looking stupid. Okay, 15 by 10, four and a half inch backspace, and that's on a stock width rear axle. Something else that's been asked, it does not have sliders on the rear shackles. They are the original to this truck, original, not in the best condition. But they are the original shackles and the original shackle bushings and the original leaf springs. Now, with everything that I've just shown you and some of the details I've given, I'm certain someone's gonna ask, how fast is it? Okay, I'm not gonna tell you that. I can tell you the truck is without question, capable of low one teen, possibly faster than that 60 foot on a prep track, especially if it's on radials. We don't do that hardly at all ever, but um, I will say that the truck is capable of one, two, zero, 60 foot on a decent no prep. Um, on a junk no prep, it'll still go high 120s. The way you see it sitting right here. So, it does not cost 
a lot of money to make an S10 work. Okay, but there's a few cheat codes that you need to know. And a lot of pitfalls that you don't want to fall into. No drop leaves. No lowering spindles. Don't do it. Those are your two biggest pitfalls to trying to no prep street race or even even prep race in my opinion a mediocre bracket prep two pitfalls don't do it so guys i'm in the house now and uh, i took a considerable amount of video tonight more than i realized once i got started into this i didn't realize how long this video was going to be i got into a really deep conversation about tires and um I think I'm going to get into that in the next the next video that I do about suspension setup. I'll do another one. But for right now, I'm going to have to cut this thing off here tonight because I was at 37 minutes. And I already know that at 19 minutes or 20 minutes, it takes forever to upload these videos. So I don't want to, I'm not going to deal with that tonight. So I apologize. I'm going to cut this one short. Um, I don't mean to leave anybody hanging. Hopefully I haven't bored anyone to death. I'm certain that if you have an S10 pickup truck, you are probably soaking this stuff in because um, personally I don't know anybody with a stock S10 uh, chassis and suspension and springs and all that stuff that performs as well as Billy's does on the street in a no prep without having the turbos in the bed and, you know, the truck's all hacked up. So <clears throat> I hope you, I hope everybody in, enjoyed this video. I hope it's helping somebody. Um, but I'm going to wrap this thing up tonight and uh, let you guys go. Thank you for the likes and the shares and the subscriptions. Uh, I'm blown away to be quite honest with you with the love and support for uh, my channel. I mean, I knew everybody loves Billy's channel, but um, believe me, I, I, I try to read all the comments and the messages. Uh, I can't respond to every single one of them. I apologize. I just can't. I, do, I just don't have the time. But believe me, I read them, and they're, they're very, uh, very much appreciated. So thank you all. We'll see you maybe tomorrow or tomorrow night. See ya.